The legendary French film director Jean-Luc Godard has died at the age of 91. His most famous movie, A Bout de Souffle, or Breathless, started a run of acclaimed releases that rewrote the rules of film and influenced directors from Martin Scorsese to Quentin Tarantino. Let's take a look at a clip. New York Herald Tribune! Je te le rends, il n'y a pas d'horoscope. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'horoscope? L'horoscope, c'est l'avenir. J'ai envie de savoir l'avenir, pas toi? Moi aussi. New York Herald Tribune. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Rien, je te regarde. With more, his film critic and host of the Screen Show on ABC Radio National, Jason De Rosso. Hi there, Jason. Good to see hey, you. Hey, Ross. Hi. Yeah. So, what earned Godard his special place in cinema history? Well, I think it was because he was he was an innovator from the get go. Um, Abu the Surfer, Breathless was a film that innovated. It did things that were considered amateurish until that point, and partly it was because Godard, even though he'd been a critic, he was kind of new to filmmaking, but he had a great desire to to make something uh, an homage to the kind of B movies, the the gangster movies that he enjoyed so much that came out of America, and there were jump cuts and all sorts of things that you just didn't do. But, you know, he might have imploded and been a kind of mediocre talent, but but his genius was that he continued to innovate. He became a, a director known for fragmentation, known for quoting other films, I mean, right from Breathless, but he would do it in increasingly sophisticated and layered ways later. Um, I mean, filmmakers that were influenced by him, like Tarantino, you know, who's considered a guy who quotes a lot, um, he's nothing compared to the way that, that Godard ended up sampling from other films and other ideas and other art forms. And so he would enter into different periods of his life. He became quite political after 68. He had a very long period of being very interested and influenced by 68 and workers' struggles. Um, and his films became increasingly more dynamic and bizarre, quite frankly. Here we're seeing excepts of some of his later later works, um, the, the Image Book, uh, Film Socialism, Goodbye to Language. These are all films where he embraced digital technology, he embraced uh, iPhones, and they were remarkable essayistic kind of contemplations on everything from cinema to the big issues uh, of the time. I mean, he was once quoted as saying, you know, a film only needs a girl and a gun, and in a way he was a filmmaker who understood the simplicity of cinema and the need for it to be on one level simple, simple um, but also sophisticated. And yet on another level, he was incredibly dense. He would make, as I say, films dealing with really big issues. I mean, he was one of those filmmakers, like many of his generation in Europe especially, who were traumatised by what the Holocaust meant for the West, what the Holocaust meant for image making, how cinema could possibly respond, if at all, to such horror. And so he was a filmmaker, you know, influenced by such deep questions about humanity, about the West, um, and, and uh, you know, influenced so many others uh, along the way. Yeah, you say that. Are there direct examples of his influence on modern directors? You mentioned Tarantino a little earlier. Well, Tarantino is interesting because he called his first uh, production company a band apart. A band of outsiders was uh, one of uh, one of Goddard's earlier films, and of course, there's a dance sequence from that film, which is very famous, and and uh, it was partly an inspiration for the dance sequence from Pulp Fiction. I mean, Tarantino has spoken about how he loved the way dance occurs in uh, in Goddardian films, and this is one of the most famous sequences. Um, and, and certainly Scorsese was very influenced uh, by Godard as well and a whole new wave, especially in that early period. Um, Wong Kar Wai from Hong Kong is very influenced by Godard. But Godard continues to kind of influence newer generations of filmmakers too. He's very influential around the world uh, with that essayistic style of filmmaking that he became so uh, renowned for. I mean... Don't forget, he made History of Cinema, uh, a, a huge film essay about the history of film, which sampled uh, films. It used his voiceover. It did so in such a dynamic and, and dense way. He was a modernist, but in some ways there was a sense of his films being almost Baroque with the richness of their imagery. Mm. What's your favourite of his uh Work, Jason. I actually, well, I actually like um, his later films very much. I, I really like film socialism. I really like uh, Goodbye to Language. 
Um, you know, uh, there, but there are just so many. I mean, uh, Love Contempt, which is this film you made with Bridget Bardot, Michelle Piccoli and Jack Plant. It was an adaptation of a Moravia, Moravia story, which I'd read in Italian uh, existential literature from Italy. Um, and he completely flipped that book. What he's done with that film is just un unbelievable. So, yeah, he continues to be this inspiration. And also he was a historian of cinema as well. And he was an advocate of cinema. And he was... He fought against the banality and the, well, the the, the banality of images in our image-rich ecosystem. He was an advocate for the almost sacred role of the filmmaker in making images and sound that mattered and that weren't banal. And so wherever you start with Godard, and there's a lot of humour in Godard we should remember as well, but wherever you start, even if you don't necessarily get everything that he's on about in, in his films, and I still, a lot of his films are a little bit opaque to me, but wherever you start, you will recognise, I think, the playfulness, the invention, and the sheer sort of vitality, the vital force in his films right up until the end. He started as, a, as an iconoclast, and he was an iconoclast stylistically right up until the end, which I think is remarkable. He never mellowed.